we've seen Speaker Boehner reach out to Democrats a little bit over the past week, and that's because he thinks he might not have enough members of his own party to pass this big omnibus spending bill. He might have to go to the Democrats um, to give him enough votes to push him over the edge. A budget proposal posted in the dead of night. Less than two days to grasp what's at stake and then issue a vote. Lawmakers on one side steaming mad at their counterparts for not growing a spine and something of a dark smile from the party that keeps forcing hands. He's a former member of the House of Representatives, a former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, and one of the smartest men we know when it comes to navigating the beltway traps. Let's welcome Pete Hoekstra into Midpoint. Pete, pleasure to see you again. I, Ed, I think you just welcome. I think I just did too. Pete, we cannot hear you properly. Let's see if Pete's. Uh, I don't like have any audio, Ed. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's take just a moment here. We're going to go ahead and get Pete back on here because we want to bring you up to speed. Hang on, Pete. We're going to go ahead and take care of some of the technical issues here, if you will. Let's bring you up to speed on a couple of things here. First of all, with regard to John Boehner and this entire package here, he says the Democrats, he expects they're going to vote for this funding bill, expected that the GOP is going to need a lot more Democratic votes given some of the opposition here. Let's bring you up to speed. And again, on the dollars here, this is a one14 trillion, that's trillion with a T, spending bill. Uh, the outside groups are just going crazy here. This includes 11 appropriations bills funding agencies through the fiscal year and a continuing resolution that will fund the Department of Homeland Security for only a few months. That is part of the issue here because there are many people. Ted Cruz has been at the forefront of this actually from the very first day saying it is time to shut down the government Give the Democrats exactly what they want. Let's go ahead and force them, but let's make sure that we stop funding Homeland Security, get this through on immigration, and make something happen. Of course, what we've all talked about from time to time and time again is that if indeed the government were to shut down, the Republicans would get blamed. This comes into what is basically nothing more than a great amount of gamesmanship on both sides here. Now, the one thing that needs to be pointed out here, nobody is using the S word here again. You, you just don't hear shut down again because people are being very, very cautious of exactly what they're talking about here. They don't want to talk about it, but it is actually still sitting back there because, again, you've got members of the Republican Party who say, let's go to it. Let's just shut down this government and let's let them pay for it. It's just not going to happen that way. Here's a couple things about the bill. It does not support a call. This is some of the waste, actually, that you put into a bill like this. There's a Call on the bill by billionaire casino owner Sheldon Adelson for a ban on legalized Internet gambling. This just one of the many things and a little bit of those hidden things that are sitting in the bill. We got our audio go ahead and fixed out here for a couple of moments. Pete Hoekstra joins us now. Pete, can you hear me all right? I can hear you. Yes, I can. There Ed. we go. All right. We only got a couple minutes. We got to take a break, but we're going to come back again and talk to you more here. So two minutes we have left here. What is with the gamesmanship here, Pete? Because to many people, this seems like the Republicans are just backed into a corner again by the Democrats saying, we know you don't want to shut down the government. We play the game well and we're beating you at it. I think it's typical uh, end of session, end of year uh, kind of uh, deal making that goes on. There's a lot of folks who want stuff put into this what is called a Christmas tree bill. Uh, why? Because everybody's hanging everything that they can on this last bill uh, just before this Congress adjourns. Uh, it's always an ugly period of time for, uh, for sausage making. And as long as the Democrats still hold the Senate and the White House, you'll see this. Uh, hopefully in the next Congress, Republicans in charge of the House and the Senate, uh, it will be a little bit more smoother. Did the Democrats play this well and basically force the hands of the Republican and force them basically to concede on certain issues just to get this thing through? I think so. I mean, Republicans are backed into a corner. It's the last day of this, you know, the last couple of days of session. Uh, and Republicans have said, uh, we, will not, uh, we will not shut down government. And so they've got two choices. They can pass this big omnibus bill, but they've got options. They can do a continuing resolution. Uh, that keeps government open, that uh, keeps it open for three or four months and gives them more options as they move into 2015. So they're backed into a corner, but they do have choices. 30 seconds to go, then we'll take a break, come back, talk some national security. But Ted Cruz is the one who's been screaming, grow a spine. Don't let him back you into a corner. Is he pretty much a lone wolf sitting in this, or is there more of a, a, a groundswell, if you will? Well, he's got to lay out more of a strategy than don't let him back you into a corner. Exactly how are we going to get... Uh, the conservative agenda passed, passed through this Senate and passed and signed into law that by this president uh, without shutting down government. That's 
more of a, that, that's the additional responsibility that Ted Cruz has at this point. Just seems like we have been here before. We're going to be there again. All right, Pete, hang tight. We're going to come yes. right back to you. We'll turn to the battle being waged over CIA torture and who's telling the truth. And later on, Will Poe, Washington Post blogger Jennifer Rubin, actually has kudos for John Kerry.